We have an update on the Vince McMahon Netflix documentary, plus the latest on Kenny Omega's AEW return and a WWE star's name change was scrapped. We'll talk about it. It's all in the Cultaholic Wrestling News right now. So Vince McMahon uh, removed from TKO as executive chairman of the board uh, with allegations uh, from numerous sources, no numerous sides uh, currently in the works. It does ask questions about the planned Vince McMahon documentary for Netflix, especially when you consider that this was a deal that was made while Vince was very much still in power there yep. and WWE plans to move their programming to Netflix next year. We have an update on that from the Wrestling Observer. Yes, they say regarding the Netflix documentary on Vince McMahon, which at last word was to be a six part series, some thought with a Netflix 5.2 billion deal with TKO and the Janelle Grant lawsuit, that may be uh, that maybe Netflix would scrap the thing. This isn't the case, but they obviously have to change the direction based on what happened. At one point, the plan was for it to be out sooner, but it's not going to be out during Mania season, but it is still planned to be released in 2024, but no time frame is finalized. Obviously have to change the direction based on what happened, which suggests to me that the documentary we're gonna get about Vince McMahon probably isn't gonna be the one that they initially set out to make. Mm. And, and it'll be interesting to see how that one shapes up. We still don't, don't, don't have any other details yeah, uh, uh, with the exception of that from The Observer. But I'm, I'm fascinated to see how... I really hope they really tell the story. Me, you know like, what, do you know what I mean? Is th absolutely, especially yeah. with everything that's happened, I think it would go down like a lead balloon if they completely just diverted away from everything that's happened recently. Mm -hmm. um, I think I was reading something that Meltzer said, because I, I believe Meltzer's uh, a talking head on this thing as well. And mm. he said, uh, Vince said, go out there and make a, uh, a, a very truthful documentary about me and uh not sure if it was originally <laughs> planned to be this truthful as truthful as it might be but i mean it has to be yeah. doesn't it with everything that's happened it absolutely has to be Here's an interesting one in terms of documentaries. Uh, from Monday, uh, a brand new wrestling documentary drops on the BBC Sounds app. Uh, it's an eight-part series as part of Sports Strangest Crimes. This is a really cool series they do on BBC Sounds, uh, which is hosted by numerous uh, famous people. And it tells stories uh, about, the, as you says, the weirdest crimes that took place in the world of sport. The man who bought cricket, the, uh, the, the, the fake sheikh who tempted to buy a football team with no money the kidnapping of Shergar, the horse race, the, the racing horse rather. Uh, and, and this one is set to come out on Monday and it's all about Bruiser Brody. Uh, the Ballad of Bruiser Brody is going to be an eight part series uh, hosted by Adam Hill from The Last Leg. He's oh, doing the voice wow. for it. That's cool. really cool. And it's 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 an incredible story. It's a it, it gets quite dark at points. Though you will no doubt have seen other documentary presentations about it. But if you want something something cool to listen to, you can download the BBC Sounds app. And on Monday, you'll get the Ballad of Bruiser Brody. That's very cool. If you download the BBC Sounds app as well, you can also hear me tomorrow morning on BBC Radio Newcastle and BBC Radio Tees. But I, I won't plug that. <laughs> but I digress. <laughs> but I digress. <laughs> Six a.m. tomorrow morning, GMT. Come say hi. Kate from Fight Club, still going to fight you. Uh, now, moving over to AEW. And, yes. And some question marks, of course, still over the uh, the future of Kenny Omega. Yeah. So Tony Khan has talked about this. He has, yeah. He was speaking to comicbook.com and, uh, and obviously speaking on Kenny Omega's AEW absence. Uh, and he said that he doesn't want to put a timetable on his return, saying, hopefully he will be back soon with us. Uh, I don't want to put pressure on it. He was really in a bad way, and I don't want to put a timetable or try to rush him back. But... I'm optimistic we'll see Kenny Omega again. Kenny is absent from AEW following a diverticulitis diagnosis. Now, what we're kind of waiting on, according to The Observer and other sources, is a decision on whether he will undergo surgery for it, whether it's something that can be treated uh, with, with rehabilitation and dietary changes, or if it needs to be something uh, where they go under the knife with him. Uh, if it's surgery, according to The Observer, a couple of months after the surgery, he'll be able to return. But again, as Tony has said, there's no timetable on when we will see Kenny Omega again. Yeah. Just as soon as he is healthy and in the right place, physically, emotionally, mentally, to be back in AEW. Agreed. There's no need to rush back. No, he's put in so much work. 
hasn't he with with AEW and in other promotions as well like he's done so so much and uh, you just wish nothing but the best for someone who is one of the best oh, in the gosh, world yeah. as well you want them to come back feeling 100% uh, and uh, yeah just feel better soon Kenny Omega feel Let's better share, soon. let us share Andrew as we've shared our best wishes to Kenny Omega yes let us share some good news about Rampage whoa yeah very often, but let's share some good news about Rampage so this comes via WrestleNomics who say AEW Rampage garnered 541,000 viewers this week, marketing its highest viewership since the January 6, 2023 episode, which aired on its typical Friday slot. Now, this episode experienced a notable surge, showing a 65% increase in viewership compared to the preceding week, which had 327,000 viewers. That is a lot. Mm -hmm. um, moreover, this, week, uh, this week's broadcast excelled in the coveted 18 to 49 demographic, achieving a rating of 0.27. This figure stands as the highest in this demographic since the April 20, uh, sorry, the April 20, uh, oh April 22nd, 2022. That's the word I was it's, looking for. Do you know what Why? it is? It's all the twos. It's because it's all the twos. It's all the twos, the 22nd. It's like four ducks swimming, so four swans swimming across and the page. Like, I was like, April swans. That's <laughs> April, exactly what I was thinking. It's April all the swans. I forgot to count there. Well, that was the last time that they had a rating this high. Amazing result for Rampage. Yes. And, and do you know what? You are on the money, honey, with what we talked about yesterday. Oh. When we talked about how the the finish yeah. to the TNT title match bled over into Rampage, and you went, that's a planned that's thing. That's a tremendous that's idea to do. Brilliant. And also, I guess, you know, with, with Dynamite being, I feel like, quite as hot as it was, there was a lot of stuff going on Dynamite this mm. week, and then for Rampage to follow that afterwards... Seems like such a good idea as well. Yeah. Just to, there's already people tuning in, as you were saying. You see the end of the other match there too, that bleeds into that. Like, it just all seems to be like the right decision to to make. It really is. I hope this is something they can build on. Mm. Put some Jeff Jarrett matches on there. That'll <laughs> that'll push it. Get the total non-stop <laughs> arseholes on there. Do it, you cowards. Do it. Do it before he turns up a cultaholic. And Figure four is the S out of me, as he said he would on my world this week. <laughs> Cheers, Jeff. Love your best friend. Uh, we'll end on this one. Uh, Sean Spears is in NXT, and he was chatting to Sean Ross Sapper Fightful. And apparently, there was, for time, a conversation about him ditching Sean Spears and going back to being Ty Dillinger, which was the name that he went under in NXT mm -hmm. and briefly on SmackDown in his first WWE run. And he said to Sean Ross Sapp, it was discussed preference-wise. I was asked, which would you prefer? And I immediately felt that Sean Spears was the best way to go. Then, speaking with Sean Michaels, he enjoyed the presentation of Sean Spears. He enjoyed what I brought to the table in that aspect, and he said, how can we make this work? We were able to filter it up the ladder a little bit, and we were able to make it all work. The good news is I have the rights to majority that I present, whether that be the name, the music, the logos, I have the rights to all of that. So I presented it as all possibilities, and lucky enough, thankfully enough, we were able to keep the same concept of what I was working with. So we were nearly Ty Dillinger again. Yes. I'm glad we kept Sean Spears. Are you? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, again, I think the presentation of, of Sean Spears is very cool. The chairman, where he sits mm -hmm. on the chair, does the whistle thing. I think that's quite nice. But uh, I guess once again, as we've seen with, with Cody Rhodes as well, it shows that WWE are, are willing to stick with the thing. You know, it's enticing, isn't it, maybe for someone who is on the other side of the fence to hear that, oh, they've managed to keep their presentation and who they are. Uh, like this evolution of yourself as a wrestler and how far you've come and what you've done. And you're able to keep that when you go into the other company. That's, uh, that's a pretty cool deal to, to hear, you know? And it's a really like new way of thinking for WWE. It is. There's a few glaring exceptions to that rule but more mm. often than not when people come in they're kind of rebuilt from the ground up again yes yeah and uh, obviously with some very glaring omissions off the top of my head I think AJ Styles I think CM Punk I think Samoa Joe mm -hmm. uh, but more often than not you get sort of re-kitted and retooled and I love the fact that Ty Dillinger left Sean Spears came back yes yeah, that I like a lot. I like it a lot. And we'll have more wrestling news for you throughout the day at cultaholic.com. I like you a lot, and I like you a lot. Oh. Case, case. Love you, bye.